Hello everyone, welcome to another dislike video. Today we're going to be watching and looking at the new espers and the patch note coming to dislike. Uh, this video's been out for about a day, but I decided to wait because usually they do like the three individual videos for each. Showing up what they do, but with the patch notes available on dislike, I just thought it'd be easier to go ahead and just watch the video, see how it is, and then go over the patch notes. Because there's a lot more than just the new characters and the new event being added. So let's go. Now, I, I know the character's designs because I've watched the video before, but it's just really interesting. Like, the cinematic quality. Like, the quality in these videos is so high and so good. Another boring love story. Is it that time already? It's so nice. If I can just finish this last one. And Thanatos. Grant me a few more minutes. Such an interesting design. Lady Reaper. Origami love. Thanatos is in the game. One performs alone. Her belt dress is very interesting, that's for sure. When my last day comes. Oh, the beginning of a legend. So she is a D she can be a DPS. And then this guy. This guy looks sick. Yo! Oh, he's a five star. Okay. Five star shimmer. He looks his cinematic is sick. And then we have a new four star shimmer support. So she's gonna be the other two are gonna be more rare than the other. But hey, another support in the game. That's sick. And then this, yo, this this skin right here. This skin nice. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, Ooh, that's nice. That's a nice Drew skin. Let me organize that afternoon tea. And they put an effect on the audio. So if Esper Feud, interesting but challenging, the brand new event will give you the best experience ever. And that's it for the video. Ophelia looks really cool. Her design's nice. The design, uh, well, I'll click back there and talk about stuff. But it's nice. Like, this stuff is so good. It's so nice. The game deserves a lot more, uh, flow, flood, flood, flood. What's the word? Traffic. That's the word. I was gonna say flow. That's not even the right word. All right, like the character designs are real nice. Thanatos, interesting take on Thanatos. She's got this, just a skirt, and then <laughs> she got the titties hanging out. Ooh. Sorry, I was taking a drink. New five star Esper. This was the one based off the Greek mythology. Uh, talked about uh, in the tweets. Uh, we're not going to be able to tell really what her abilities do until I switch into the game and read the patch notes, but. Her design is cool. Her cinematic looks real nice. This guy. They call me the Berserker. This guy looks sick. Chiyo. He looks cool. Is that a hammer? I don't know, but his I got a, his cinematic is so nice. He can definitely looks like some type of bruiser. And then we have Alice. Interesting. It'll be interesting what she does. So two shimmers and a wind. Another wind DPS. Maybe. She could end up being a bruiser too. But we'll see. But we'll see. And then the Drew skin. The Drew skin's just nice. This is nice. Like they're easily going to be going over the characters that a lot of people are going to have. So expect a lot of three star skins to come out. Right? <laughs> like maybe expect in the next... In the next new patches coming up, expect maybe like Bryn, or expect maybe like Q. That'd be a very easy to do skins because Bryn is the first character you get, Q is like the third character you get, and then you know from there, right? But Drew's skin is nice. I'm curious to read about this, the Esper feud, and customize completed. 
your exclusive flawless six. I hey yo wait. That relic is trash though. <laughs> That relic is doo doo. Holy crap, it's doo doo. Look at that. Flat HP on a circle? Yikes. But if I can get flawless relics? She. It might be time. Sheesh. Alright, so we are going to now just switch over to the game. I can now turn my audio back on for the game. Ahaha, <laughs> nice. No! Stop it. And we're going to go into the patch notes. There's a lot. There is a lot. Patch notes. Download will happen on August 2nd. So, you know. August 2nd, the game will go down with for the patch to go out. So we've got about... We've got like a week on it, pretty much. Yeah, a week from now. A week from now, we'll get these characters in the game. Which is very nice. Alright, so let's look at... Jung Julie. He is the new five-star shimmer. Is a fighter expert who becomes stronger the more damage he takes. Okay, so he's he's built to be this kind of like maybe less bruiser build, maybe. His first ability, Sky Smash, consumes a certain amount of certain percent of HP, deals damage to one enemy based on attack. The lower the HP percentage, the higher the damage. So you want him to be you mm, That's interesting. Uh, Demon Reborn is his passive. Okay, so he has, so he only has a first ability and a third ability, and then he has a passive. In the normal mode, uh, Jiang takes a certain percentage of damage for an ally when they suffer single target damage based on the percentage of his lost HP. Increases base speed, base attack, and base defense in Demon mode. Increase, oh. Okay. In demon mode, increases speed, attack, and defense by a certain percentage. Oh! When taking lethal damage, he does not die and enters demon mode. Removes all buffs and debuffs from himself and restores HP based on the max on his match XP. Also gains standoff. Interesting. So you definitely want to build him... It feels like you want to build him with a lot of HP. Because obviously, depending on this percentage... You know, I don't have the numbers. I'm pretty sure people have figured out a way to do it, but I don't have that yet. I could ask people, but it's whatever. Depending on these numbers, he could do a lot of damage. And he's like, and he's got kind of like a Hades where, you know, he's got a second life for free, which is pretty good. Um, Demon mode. Immune to debuffs, can't cast abilities or counterattack. Randomly attacks one enemy every turn, dealing damage based on his attack that ignores defense. Uh, before attacking, dispel all buffs from the target. When this mode expires, transform back into the original form. Okay, so obviously they tested this and saw that revenge on him was way too strong. So they had to make it that he can't counterattack. So you can't just put revenge on this guy and go nuts, right? Now, that's, that's just the base form. That's not even the ascended form. Uh, oh, man. I got to try to compare this. Uh, it takes a certain percent of HP when an ally suffers a single target attack based on the percentage of his HP loss. Do, 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 and demon mode increases by a percentage when taking lethal damage. He has not time to remove all buffs. Debuffs himself. And debuffs from himself and restores HP to max. To restores HP based on his max HP. Also gains standoff. Restored HP based on damage dealt under... Wait. Okay, so this is the added on. Restores HP based on damage dealt under demon mode. So... The more damage you do while in demon mode, the more HP you get back. So you want him to be fast, too. I mean, he does gain ba increased speed based off of, like, percentages, especially in demon mode. So we'll see how fast you actually need to make him. Uh, is this the same? Uh, I mean, the divas, can I kind of... Randomly attacks one enemy every turn. Do you want damage? 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 Do you want
before attacking, dispel a buff. Okay, so that's pretty much the same. Look at his passive. His passive is 10 miles long, and then his third ability is right here. Consumes a certain percentage of HP, deals damage to all enemies based on attack. The lower his HP percentage, the higher the damage taunts the targets. Hmm, interesting. So he also taunts, so he can get hit and get into demon mode faster or get his health down sooner. Okay, he seems he seems pretty crazy. He definitely is gonna feel. I feel like he's gonna be best in like hollow battle, maybe PvP. He could probably mess around again. No, I mean he could probably mess around in relic. I think he's gonna be like a beast in PvP. We'll have to see his damage numbers for sure. But that's pretty crazy actually. He seems pretty crazy because he gets he just gets a base boost and then a percentage base boost in demon mode. Like he 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 might be pretty disgusting. Alright. Let's move to Ophelia, the five star wind. Feels a fire capable of inflicting debuffs and performing pursuit attacks. Ooh, okay, so Fafnir. She's already good in Fafnir if she can perform pursuit attacks. Ophelia's first ability, elegant strike, attacks one enemy based on an attack and inflicts bleed. Very simple. Very easy. And she can do pursuit. So she have a passive? No, it doesn't look like it. Alright. Ophelia's, or Thanatos Ophelia's second ability. Heartless Reaper attacks one enemy based on an attack. Sorry about that. I got a phone call. Uh, where was I? Ophelia's second ability. Uh, Heartless Reaper attacks one enemy based on an attack. Each buff on the caster and each debuff on the enemy increases damage by a certain percentage. Ooh, this bonus damage has an upper limit. The caster restores HP based on the damage dealt. Gain an extra turn after killing target. Hmm. So it's like, um... It's like Zelmer. With the debuffing. Except with buffs as well. So you're going to want to run every type of buff. Like, you could easily run her with what? Yusua and uh, the Siren. Oh, what's her name? Uh, What's her name? Yeah, I know my things. So I'm not touching that. Uh, You could run her with Soya, maybe Celine. That's her name. Just just get her a ton of buffs. But it's probably, it's probably the buffs are probably only up to four, is my guess. Because otherwise, I think she'd do a lot of damage. And then she gains an extra turn after killing target. So, definitely hollow battle, definitely PvP. Easily. If you have a third ability, Butterfly Dreams attacks one enemy subject to... Attacks one enemy subject to one attack. Boom. Based on the total number of own buffs and the enemy's debuffs, cast Elegant Strike to perform several pursuit attacks. If the enemy dies during the pursuit attacks, continues to attack other enemies. The number of pursuit attacks has an upper limit. Pursuit damage on the same target gradually weakens with each hit. Okay, that's... I'm interested... Butterfly Dreams attacks one enemy subject to own attack. Based on the total number of buffs and enemy debuffs, cast Elegant Strike to perform several pursuit attacks. If the enemy dies during the pursuit, continue attacks. Okay, so what is the ascended part of it? Based to attacks one enemy subject to an attack, based on total number, do do do. Castle can try to perform several pursuit attacks. The enemy dies during pursuit attack. Do 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 do. Pursuit damage on the same target. This ability and its pursuit attacks inflict defense down on the first hit on each new target. Hmm. And then she's obviously the main focus of the event, so she will have higher odds. Look at the look at these five star passives. Look how crazy they are. And then we're gonna get to the four star. We're gonna get to um We're gonna get to the four star. We're gonna get to Alice. Who is a four star. Alice is a powerful support SR capable of extending the duration of ally buffs. Okay, Alice's first attack. Star stream deals one damage on enemy based on attack and has a chance to call one ally in to assist. Okay, so she's good in Fafnir then too. Does that proc off revenge? 
Depending on the chance, her on revenge would be really good. Or not revenge, sword. I keep saying revenge because that's just what it is. Okay, second ability has a passive called Witch's Blessing. Grants attack up buff to allies at the start of Alice's turn. Oh, wait, just, just all allies? She just passively gained, gives everybody attack? Yo, Anki Chai and her are gonna have a field day. Because you make her faster than Anki Chai, and then Anki Chai is just a, a cooldown rotating machine. Alice's third ability, Crystal Shards, extends buff duration for all allies and grants them critical rate up. Okay, that's pretty good. So it's like, I mean, you could so you could compare her to Dahlia, because Dahlia also increases attack and uh, critical hit rate, but she also increases, uh, Dahlia also increases AP over this. Um... The ascend okay, third ability ascends, extends buff duration for all allies, grants them critical hit up and speed up. Okay. Hmm. Is she better than Dahlia? Every turn she's giving attack. You would probably want to run her oceans so you can keep the crit rate and speed up. And then she can call an ally into attack. Hmm. I'd say it each has their... I would say Dahlia and Alice here. Each have their own... Uh, uniqueness. That's the word. Ugh. So. We got that. Alright. Honestly. I think the most interesting... Out of the three, is definitely uh, Jiang right here, because he's got a lot of like inherent buffs and stuff. Ophelia is definitely the next interesting, and then Alice, obviously the four star. Of the event is kind of just the hair, but she's still strong. Don't get that mixed up. She still seems very strong. All right. Um, I guess opinions on this. I will. I mean, I really don't have anything to summon, so I will be skipping the banner. I don't really need Thanatos. Like, I have a wind DPS. I've technically been working on another one for my Fafnir team. And um, I already have strong supports, so I don't need Alice. And then getting Jiang is going to be a little difficult because he's a shimmer. So, it's a skip for me, but you can make your own choice as a gotcha. And you don't need my opinion. Added Relic Reset feature. Players can enter this panel from the Relic Enhancement screen. Players can consume Reset Stones to reset a Relic's secondary attributes. Can only reset a Relic with four secondary attributes. When resetting a boosted Relic, each secondary attribute's enhancement time will be randomly allocated based on the total times it has been enhanced. Players can manually choose to keep the secondary attributes for the, before or after. Okay, so this is the... This is basically just the secondary attribute reroll. Sorry, microphone. Um, from the Ahmed event or the Geb event, where you got to do it three times, you can now do that. But I think you're only rolling the base stats that are already on it, and not random rerolling all the stats. Okay, that's what I think it is. From just reading it. And associating it with something in game. All right, VR Battleground. Um, I saw this on Twitter. Basically, what this is is this is a battleground to send in an Esper and test out their uh, abilities, their damage. You can just test out what they do, test out their kit, everything like that. The base level they go into is at twenty, and they can go up. You can increase the level of the enemies accordingly. And you can max out Esper stats. You can use original stats on your character. And you can check the performance afterwards. It's very simple, very easy. And a very nice thing to add. Uh, added Union Academy stages. Unlocks for level 16 plus players. The Union Academy has been founded to help new Espers quickly grasp combat skills. Complete courses and exams by the Academy to claim awesome rewards. Cool. That tells us nothing. <laughs> Let's see here. Quick equip and unequip relics players can quickly equip suitable relics from the relic panel. When an Esper has no relics equipped, players can quickly equip two set relics and four set relics. Okay. 
When well, expires equipped relics, players can replace them with better relics from new attainment ones. Okay. Okay, so there's a quick clip. That's okay. Added a new filter in the Esper Gallery that allows players to filter Espers based on their elemental class. Very nice. Added solos and diaries for characters. Added a name card. Max out resonant. New tactics for Geb, Stuart, Hera, and Hercules. Okay. That's not bad. New skin for Do Drew will drop at the same time as the patch. Uh, there's no way to get the skin immediately after the event. If it will be available for purchase at its original price in the plaza after a short period of time, He's, you can change you can change Esper appearance in the Esper panel. Added R pass that yields R coins when completing daily tasks and cumulative tasks. Use R coins to obtain for relic essence, reset stones, boost stones, and other rewards. Players can also pay for an upgrade to R pass to obtain extra. Are that so? Is that a second battle pass? Interesting. All right. So this is the event. Um, not gonna go crazy into detail about the event. It's about side stories. Or it's just another event. Probably talking about the story. Uh, each event requires inspiration points to unlock during the event log in daily to get three inspiration points and spend 67 other instances okay so this is, looks like it's gonna be a this looks like it's gonna be the same as geb's event ahmed's event where you spend stamina you get points you use the points to advance further in the event okay yep she's got chance up all right esper feud event what does it do? Do, 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 do? Uh Esper Feud is an outdoor competition reality show held by the Exert's radio label, record label. Collect feud smart cards to get awesome rewards. Live broadcast contains three areas that unlock as time passes by. Each area contains three stages. There are three difficulties for each stage, normal hard and purgatory. Ooh. Purgatory. Completes a difficult completing a difficulty unlocks the next one. Each stage adopts different battle rules as the difficulty increases, new rules will be added. Completing a difficulty grants feud smart cards, relic radix radixes, and other rewards. Each stage will grant up to three feud smart cards. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Burp. Uh players can customize two Customize two flawless six-star relics in this event. Players can select the set type, position, main attribute of the relic, and use relic radix to refresh its secondary attribute. Yo, only two? Dang. Oh, there were so many relics I got rid of recently that had a terrible main stat, but the substats were so good. Oh. That is unfortunate. That's extremely unfortunate. Oh, my goodness. Holy crap. Relic radixes can be acquired from live broadcasts and purchased with Nexus Crystals. Free relic radix will be consumed first. If there are unused relic radix purchased with Nexus Crystals, when the event ends, Nexus Crystals of their equivalent will be added from the mail. Okay. Feud Glory. Once a certain number of feuds are collected, players can claim rewards in Feud Glory. Rewind Event. Acquire enchantment materials through Rewind to power up espers. After this update, newly registered players get two attempted attempts to reset their espers within 30 days. For players who register before the update, they will unlock they the event will be unlocked on their first login after the update, lasting for 30 days. During the event, the star rating level and ascension phase of the player's selected esper will be removed to their defaults. Materials spent on the upgrades will also be refunded. Resonance and ability levels cannot be rewound. So basically, if you leveled up a character, if you if you threw Ascension and Star level, got a character to like five, but you're not using them, you can use this to bump them back down to their base, except for abilities and resonate, which makes sense. You can reset resonate like any time. Mm. Right. Looks like they adjusted DJ contest, hollow battle optimization, have more participants to hollow battle. Uh, not going to go too crazy into that. Relic changes. Players, Astral Warcraft stress, have now been changed to Divine Blessing set, and its relic icon has also been changed. Relics and boost zones of Divine Blessing set won't drop anymore. 
I'm pretty sure that's just a astral witchcraft. Added a astral witchcraft set. Grants a 20% chance of taking another action at the end of the wearer's turn. Ooh. There it is. Ooh, that's... Oh, that's a crazy set. I, I mean, I knew they'd eventually add this from seeing the ability in um, the Cube Miracle. But, um, wow. That on so many characters is crazy. Or could be crazy. Uh, oh, boy. That's like, that's a ton of characters. I'm pretty sure anybody who puts oceans on a character will immediately put Astral Witchcraft instead. But we'll see. Uh, set drop man. In the ritual miracle, the Astral Witch set will drop from the Fafnir instance, while the Snow Dagger set will now drop from Kronos instead of the Fafnir instance. In the Desolate Land, the Astral Witchcraft boost stones will drop from the Shadow Streams instance, while the Snow Dagger set will drop from Shadow Fire. Okay. So, they're obviously putting a stronger valued relic into Fafnir, because Fafnir is the more late game fight in the relic rituals right now, until the fourth one comes out, and then they put Snow Dagger, Snow Dowager, in Kronos. Snow Dowager got a buff from 20 to 25%. Okay. Astral Wishcraft is now probably one of the better relic sets, and you could go over every Esper in the game and be like, this is good, Right? X turn value is so important in a game like this. That's why characters that like reduce cooldowns or increase cooldowns are so important. Like Bonnie reduces cooldowns on the enemy team. Unky Chai gives cooldowns to everybody who has an attack boost. Um, Geb gives reduces ability cooldown. Freya reduces ability cooldown. Like, those characters are important, mostly for PvP, but it could also be important for the Desolate Lands because your abilities coming out more are... The more your abilities come out, the more damage you're going to do, right? That's just how that works. But, uh, that's good. That's... Astro Witchcraft just went from probably one of the weirdest sets to probably one of the best come August 2nd. All right. Fafnir. Fafnir's lower HP. Uh, damage mitigation ratio has been lowered. New effect reduces damage taken and freezes enemies that are currently damaged. The carrier, the effect will only be removed when the attacks are designed number of times. Now in its third wave in the Fafnir instance, action point boost will take effect. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know that. Uh, online union shop item changes. Online union shops items Items unlocked at level 5. Inferno record fragments. Dang. They nerfed the fragments. Oh. From 5 to 1? They better reduce the price of that. Uh, Unlocked just from level 5 to level 3. Club points consumed for redeeming these changes. Changed from 125 to 500? Shimmer fragments times 5. Unlocked at Legendary 5 and unlocked at 9 are now unlocked at Club 5. New items unlocked at 5. Reset stones, epic boost stones, divine sequence or shop items changed. New item, one rare star mod. What? Am I reading this right? So these points, so these are being unlocked at 5. Instead of 7 and 9, which means a majority of clubs now will be able to have access to legendary summon shards and shimmer fragments. But the infernal fragments are 500 a pop? I... Am I reading this right? Club points consumed for redeeming have changed from 125 to 500. 500 for 5 or 500 for 1? Huh. Point war battles will now automatically continue from the battle status of the last battle. Uh, points given by victory are increased, make it easier to go up to the next tier. Good. This was needed. This was um, 
trying to get up and do those quests in arena in the uh in the point wars was really rough like i barely just got to 10 but that was after filtering like three or four times for teams i knew i could beat or had at least a chance uh esper info optimization as a filter in esper info and grow screen to prioritize showing espers equipped with relics oh that's good uh adds a full screen display feature and then do, 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 do. players can now tap and hold on the esper to display the full screen cool uh, when fusing relics, players can now select the specific position of a specific set of... Pro Ooh! To produce a relic in this position. That's a good change. Instead of having it be by chance, you can have them all focused on, like, if I need a good circle relic for, like, Ocean Wave, or if I need a good uh, spade for accuracy, you know? Added a cap to... Added a cap to relics enhancement level. One to two stars, enhancement levels at six, three is at nine, four is at twelve, and five and six is at fifteen. Okay, so they just so you so this is so new players don't see their level one and two relics and be like, oh yeah, I gotta get that to fifteen. Oh yeah. It's like, no, please stop. Please leave it alone. Uh in bounties when players need to clear monsters related to story stages, clues now lead you them now lead them to easy hard and burger based on the game of progress. Cool! Optimize boss loss screens when a player loses. More accurate tips for improving strength will be given. Change the ability casting order of Zora in auto mode. She now has a greater chance of casting her third ability. Okay. Daily reward of a black gold monthly card is changed from the Nexus 150 to gold record one. For players who have one or more remaining valid days at the time of the update, we will compensate. Okay. Uh... In the desolate land, the calculation method for the lower the enemy defense, the higher the damage dealt of boss abilities have been adjusted. All right, we get into the balance. The, we are here at the balance patch for espers now. I think we're just at the bottom. Looks like we got a couple in here. Uh, first is Trevor the Sphinx. This is the five-star shimmer. It looks like this is his first ability. Uh, first ability deals 130 damage to inflicts Neko's curse stacks. Neko curse. Uh, his first ability now just inflicts Seer for two turns. Okay, that's not bad. That's a... I don't really know what Neko Curse does, but I'm pretty sure that is a very good change. Because people are saying Trevor was bad, but I couldn't really say because I don't have Trevor, so there's no reason to, like, give my opinion on it. Alright, so his old passive, after attacking, if the target's HP is above 50%, cast the same ability of the target again. If not triggered, gains one tag one stack of neko sense this ability can be triggered once per turn each neko sense reduces damage taken by 15 percent uh, after attacking the targets okay so then the new one after attacking if the targets are 50 percent cast the same ability on the target if not triggered gains one stack this ability can be triggered once per turn gains two stacks at the start of combat okay again i don't really know what that does so probably a good thing if he's getting two stacks of his own passive at the beginning of the battle that's probably a good thing oh wait i know exactly what this does because it says it reduces but so he gets 30 percent. he starts the battle with 30 percent damage reduction Ooh, that's 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 pretty juicy that's real juicy. Wow. You're listening to Dislike Expert Radio. Whew. Holy cow, that's that's pretty big. 30% damage reduction at the start of combat is huge. Alright. Oh, they revamped him completely. Okay. So third ability is Neko Gift Box. Uh, they gave it a 20% damage increase with it. Oh, so they made his third ability inflict Neko Curse while his first ability did this. Okay, so they, so they eventually, they just swapped Neko Curse to three and Seer to one. Okay, but what does the curse change? This buff is removed upon the carrier's death, dealing 40% of Trevor's attacks as true damage to all enemies. Uh, each attack increases the damage multiplier by 40 max of five stacks upon the carrier's death the effect is removed dealing damage equal to 100 percent of driver's attack to all the carriers 
So that's the original. That's what it does. Oh, wait, 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 never mind. This is the new one. So this is so Neko Curse was changed from doing 40% of Trevor's attack is true damage. Each stack multiplying damage by 40% up to five. So so if you got five stacks on something and it died, that means you would do 200% of Trevor's attack as true damage. But now, upon the carrier's death, the effect is removed, dealing damage equal to 100% of Trevor's attack to all the carrier's allies. Okay, so we just said, so... You mark them, you blast them. They die. It does good damage. Neko Sense. Oh, they're changing Neko Sense? When stacks are maxed, reset all ability cooldowns and attacks a target twice the next turn. Then removes all existing stacks. Uh, each stack increases Trevor's crit damage by 15%. When stacks are max, resets all cooldown abilities and attacks a target twice the next turn. Then removes all existing stacks, max of 200, max of 2. So not only, if I'm getting this right, not only does he get... Maybe he loses this, but if he doesn't lose this, not only is he getting 30% damage reduction here, but he's also getting 30% crit damage on it as well wow and he's got seer i think trevor looks a little better which is a good thing because people were saying trevor was bad and then i had a guy in my twitch chat say he used him as food for something and i was mind boggled by it absolutely boggled So then next, but I think this is probably good overall. I don't have Trevor. I barely see Trevor because he's a Shimmer 5-star, so not bad. All right, next we have Lewis, uh, Ares. His third ability attacks one enemy three times. Total damage equal to 206% of attack. Each 10% of own max HP loss increases damage by 6%. Do, 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 do. New one is the same, except with each 10% of enemies HP loss increases damage by 4%. Okay. Probably good. Uh, probably. Probably. I don't have Lewis, so I can't really say anything. I know he gives himself crit rate, for sure. So... Loki's third ability is getting a new uh, a new hit up. Uh, the old one attacks all enemies three times. Each hit deals forty percent attack. Uh, each hit has a seventy five percent chance to dispel one buff from the enemy. Each attack inflicts hit inflict inflicts miss rate for two turns. Three times forty percent. Each it has a hundred percent chance to dispel one buff from the enemy. Each and he still inflicts the miss rate. Okay. So they made Loki better. He can get rid of one buff. Very nice. Very nice, very cool. That's um That's pretty okay. One buff from all enemies, you take that. Alright. I say overall pretty good. This still will have a chance to miss, by the way, because resistances, so. But it'll make it more consistent with removing a single buff. Alright, Sir Ket. Hey! It's my girl. It's my girl, Sir Ket. The Sonic Ritual Destroyer. Uh, so this is just her first ability. Um, now has a 80% chance to inflict disease. Okay, that's... That's okay, I guess. You build her with a ton of accuracy anyway, so this is very... This happens very easily. And then Deadly Toxin. The old passive attacks poison... Attacks poison a target for two turns. If the target is already poisoned, increases poison duration by one turn. Upon attacking, poisons target for two turns. Upon successful poisoning, inflicts poison for another one turn. Can only be triggered once on each target per turn. Okay, so they just changed the wording of it. Uh, 
I think that's just a wording change. I, I don't think that really changes anything. I don't think it does. I mean, she'll still be doing the same stuff. So. Yeah. I mean, cool. If it does change something and I'm not understanding what it does. Uh, you know what? I'll probably end up be changing my circuit to the new Astro Witchcraft if I can. We'll see if that really changes anything or not. I don't honestly think it does. I think they just changed the wording of it to be... To have a better understanding of what it means, personally. And last we have Lin or Hawthor. Her third ability attacks one enemy, dealing 280% of attack, gains a shield for two turns. Shield strength is equal to 30% of max HP. Pretty good. Uh, now, her the new level 3 attacks one enemy, deals 280% of attack, inflicts Seer for two turns, and grants the shield... Equal to 30% of max HP. Ooh. Now she inflicts here. I mean, that's already a pretty high attack stat. And I know Hawthor has some pretty decent attacking numbers. And has some skills. So, that's pretty good. Overall, overall on these changes to characters here, I think obviously Trevor got the most work out of it i don't know if the loose thing's gonna make a difference uh loki will definitely dispel a little bit more i don't really know if the passive is that gonna be much different and i think the hawthor buff is pretty reasonable i think everything moving forward the new feud event's gonna be nice to reroll relics and everything new hollow battle stuff new dj contest on my vision i think overall the patch is really is is pretty good i am excited for the new characters coming to the game And, yeah, I'm excited for the new characters coming to the game. And uh, thanks very much, so much for watching. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next one. See you next time.